Hello, everyone, and welcome to Got Thrones, a Game of Thrones podcast. I'm Alexandra August. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. And here with us today is Brian Croner, managing editor of GeekExchange.com. Hello. I don't think that's actually his real title. He just told me his real title, and I forgot it when I was announcing him. So you can reintroduce, you can reintroduce yourself if you want. It's your call. Actual actual title: Master of the Universe, Brian Croner. But we'll oh, there go we go. I, I've seen the business cards. So what you're here for today is our immediate take on Beyond the Wall, episode six of season seven of Game of Thrones. And what the, we're going to do is... An ultimate episode when what? all the shit always happens. Oh, and all the shit. Spoilers lot, everything, a, by the way. A lot. Yeah. Spoilers all. You can find us at, at Gaunt Thrones Speedcast on Twitter at facebook.com backslash Gaunt Thrones at Gaunt Thrones.com. You can find Brian at geekexchange.com. You can find my writing about Game of Thrones at geekexchange.com. And you can find Johnny at Cycloptico on Twitter. That is all true. All true. Um, so this week we're going to, as with our the past couple of weeks, we've been, we've been doing our immediate takes. We've been doing a, a top three and a top and a bottom three. So three things you loved about the episode, three things we didn't like about the episode. And uh, I think let's just get into it. So yeah. Johnny, give me your first top three moment. Okay, first top three moment has to be the Night King epic uh, three-point shot. That was your top three. <gasps> top, top three number one. That's was, brutal. Oh, it, it, it was, you knew it was coming. They f- forecasted it yeah. like for a good 20 I mean, seconds before. Of I don't think anyone forecasted of, a javelin. Until that moment. Like, until, like, 20 seconds before, it was just, let's look at the Night King. Let's look at Viserion. Let's look at the Night King. Let's look at Viserion. Let's look at the spear. Let's look at the dragon. So, let's like, look at the spear, who and is, here it comes. Who was happy that it was Viserion who bought it first? Because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you had to pick a least favorite dragon. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, they telegraphed it, but it was like such an ep- epic buildup because it's like, no, they're not going. Yes, they are going to. And it was like, mm-hmm. for like a long time, you knew what was going to happen. You knew that dragon was going down and it was still like uh, supremely entertaining, like edge of your seat type. It was hard because, because here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like we have never really as audience members have ever seen something on the scale at on television like a dragon this well done and we've certainly never seen one die and mm-hmm. it was hard it was really brutal though i will say towards the end when daenerys was watching when she was at east watch watching for for somebody to come back i thought she was watching for viserion i thought she was too and i think she was for her to well no for her to be waiting for john she was clearly waiting for john and she's was, clearly wait and and it was, uh, that that to me was a little bit like ugh, really <laughs> Your kid just died. I think she was waiting for Viserion and pleasantly surprised by John personally. I think she was under the guise of waiting for Viserion, but secretly waiting for John. Like she wanted, she's standing there being like, "Oh, maybe my dragon will come back." But in her heart, she wanted Jon Snow because who doesn't? After the last two episodes, who doesn't want Jon Snow? Uh, that's a fair question. So, um, <laughs> so Brian, what's your, what's one of your top threes? Uh, my, my top three was a quick moment. It was simply Tormund telling Clegane how he wants to have babies with Brienne. Because <laughs> the, just like the, the quick bonding moment, and the Hound is so adverse to bonding with anyone, and Tormund is just doesn't care. He's yeah, just no, he has no, he, no, he's out of fucks every, about that. He's like, we're friends now. You know that, right? Yeah, cool. So we friends like, now. Every social cue friends available now. to anybody in society, Tormund friends understands now. none of it. He's just like, oh, this is what's happening. He's like, I'm going to have giant babies with that large woman. It's going to be. And when the hound goes, of course, you're with her. And he's like, well, we're not together yet. Yeah. <laughs> it was like so. That was perfect. Cause like, I kind of uh, wanted to see Jorah rolling his eyes in the background saying, I've been there. <laughs> I have to say, yep. like this was this was um, kind of a weird middle point for me in terms of highs and lows. Was the dialogue this episode when, like, we had there were some really colloquial, like, ought like not oughts, but like teens colloquial dialogue. Like twenty seventeen when like when Danny says like don't call me Danny and John's like okay not Danny, 
Like, yeah, I understand mm-hmm. that it was a road to him saying, like, I'll call you my queen, which we'll get to later. But there was a lot, especially with the Hound, too. Like, there was a lot of, like, funny stuff here. There was a lot of colloquial stuff here that I was just kind of like, I like it, but I like it the way I like Independence Day. It's right. not, it, it's it's not it's good, not, but it's, it's something entertaining. It's something we didn't see early in the show when it was still George R. R. Martin's base work mm-hmm. and now that Benioff and Weiss are writing their own dialogue and that's been an issue all season uh, there's been a lot of weak dialogue this season there has but, been a dick joke I think every episode pretty much like they're really uh, them being really... dick on jokes like dick on yeah. which is like guys that's, I, that's I feel like Navarro. they're aiming they're aiming for syndication rights on Comedy Central at this Amen. point so, they're, they're aiming. like how many they're aiming, how many did, aiming. They're aiming. Uh-huh. 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 You're, you're reaching uh-huh. now you're reaching <laughs> August <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Go on. Um, but no, it, it's at the same time though. You are dealing with a lot of guys that never graduated high school. <laughs> um, this episode All did right. have my new favorite subtitle. Yeah. Because I watched the episode with the subtitles on and blows raspberry from Tormund. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. So what's Alex, your what's no? Your, it's, what's your uh, what's number mine? one of your top three? Oh, that's right. I didn't do mine. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to all the Johnson shippers in the audience. I uh, was a big big champion of yours for a long time. Unfortunately, that I have ship to say, has sailed and it has black <laughs> that, sails with a dragon. I need, on I need it. you to shut. That was hotter than Outlander. Like, I can't even talk. Like, I don't even know. Like, I am such a fucking hypocrite right now. I was like, you can't convince me of John and Danny. They're the worst ship ever. Like, no. It's been six they episodes. Did it. They fucking did it. They fucking I am did it. Such a. Oh my God. I'm such a cliche right now. But damn, was that good. When he looks at her and goes, How about my queen? Holy shit! John and the Greek didn't excite me that much. And I liked those two. Like, kind of. Like, I don't really ship anything on that show, but John and the Greek, upon second viewing, were actually kind of palatable. Fucking John and Danny, when he's like, my, they just went for it. They're just a going for it. It's like... Mm-hmm. Well, your, your John and Sansa boat had holes in it before it left the dock. Yeah, you but know, it that, had... That's in the sink. It had... There was no ship for John and Daenerys. No ship whatsoever. There was a big, nicely built you know, shell of a ship for John and Sansa. That was exciting. If we're well, not... you were you were adverse to John and Danny because it was the obvious one. Well, yeah, it was, it was too obvious. obvious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they've made it now where it's you know it's more than palatable. It's it's kind I of don't exciting. ship for anyone. It's all right, big, I'm you... a man from the Midwest. <laughs> I don't care who falls in love with who. But I have to admit this. Uh, I am actually rooting for John and Danny to get together now, and I don't care that they're blood related. Right? Do not care. <laughs> right? John and Sansa have way less of a relation. Johnny and Danny, it's super fucked up, but we don't care. It's actually good. We don't care. <laughs> I don't care. So that's, yeah. I am shamed. I, I apologize to the Johnson shippers. I am switching allegiances. I am firmly John and Danny because, good goddamn. All, like, if. You're going to have to get a lot of tattoos covered up. Um, can I start with my worst though? Yeah, the the wilding red shirts could not oh. do. <laughs> there were at least fucking four of them, and how many people did we see leave Eastwatch? Because I feel like it was only the Magnificent Seven. I feel like it was only Thoros, we saw the Hound, somebody had Eric, to be holding the camera, John, Jora, and Gendry. So there were six of them, but then there were like four people holding the camera. If that's mm-hmm. logic, and that was what? to me kind of like well, also the. The only reason we got to see the, the red shirts was to see them get swamped by zombies, which meant yeah, was so that big... someone could die. Well, right, that but didn't also matter. well, yeah, but we never got to see somebody that we. It was like, well, if you're gonna have somebody swamped by Nazis, have it be somebody important. If Thoris is gonna die, not zombies, not Nazis. Nazis. Oh, sorry. The, the metaphor is strong. Yeah, it's really strong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna see somebody swamped by zombies. I'd rather it be somebody like if Thoros is gonna die. I mean, actually, yeah. the ice bear was pretty good. the The zombie mm-hmm. bear is pretty good, but he was the only person we saw die. I would have, not that I'm taking orders, but I would have 
wanted Beric to die of zombie-ness. Yeah. Or, like, I'm happy that he's still alive, but it was just like, all right, well, we've got these if we're going to show the power of the zombies and we actually went out of our way in hard home to create a character named Carsey for the entire episode. And that was it. Then show me somebody important dying of zombie. Not. Yeah. We, we should have had Lou the wildling. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody was two days away from retirement or, or Beric should have died. Like, I don't yeah. really see why Beric is not that I don't, I don't just, not that I dislike Beric and I'm, I have faith in the writers that will make him important, but it was just like, all right, too many expendable people. This is this is like Voyager shuttles, too much. Uh, the uh, the the best thing I saw about specifically Barrick uh, was in a Facebook group I'm part of. Somebody said, "Why the hell did Barrick didn't? Why did the hell did the Lord of Light bring Barrick and Dan back from the dead six times just to have him walk away from everything like Steve Buscemi at the end of Fargo?" <laughs> I have uh, I have major issues with Beric Dondarrion. I feel the that. fact the fact that okay yes they threw some expendable wildling slash Night's Watch whoever like you know four of them. in there just four to die um, four of them so many of them you're not even going to kill Beric you're going to kill Beric's sidekick well they they went for the healer which I understand but it's a bad raid. In in my mind, this is what Beric Dondarrion was. He was given a task by Ned Stark, which he failed, and then he failed to protect Gendry, and then he failed to protect Arya. You have like a weird hard on for Beric Dondarrion. I've noticed this this week. I don't understand what his redeeming qualities are at all. The guy's <laughs> a the guy's a total loser. Ned Stark was the man. Ned Stark gave him a task: go kill the Hound. He fa- or not the Hound. I'm sorry, the Mountain. And did he kill the Mountain? No. As far as we know, he never even found the mountain. So, as far as I'm concerned, he's a total failure. I wanted him dead north of the wall. Thoros was at least funny. Beric is just preachy and annoying, and I have no, uh, I have no faith that he's going to do anything cool. So is that, is that your I low? Don't need... No, it should have been. I should have crossed something off and put him on there. But he's so low, he didn't make my list. He's not worthy of mention. <laughs> Except you already mentioned him, so... All right, Johnny, what's your low? Uh, my low, honestly, has to be the fact that Ravens now work like fax machines. Okay, right. And um, we're going to get the Raven immediately to Danny. We're going to get the Raven immediately to Eastwatch. John John hasn't apparently sent a Raven to uh, Winterfell in many weeks, according to no, Sansa, which I, I think know. is Littlefinger. That I, oh. I hope I hope it is. I fucking hope it is. And See, that I... John just forgets to write. By the way, going on a road trip. Um, and yeah. So yeah. M- Milo was the fact that ravens now work instantaneously. Well, not only do ravens work instantaneously, so do dragons. Because that okay. So my one of my second low was just logic in general. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's, Your second let's... low was facts. Okay, so first of all, yeah, the big one, which is just like ravens fly faster than Gendry, Gendry apparently, and dragons fly faster than the ravens. Fine, cool. That's the universe, and it was so funny because this was an episode that set up the universe really well. This was an episode that was like cool. So we see a blue-eyed polar bear. It's an undead polar bear because later we're going to see a blue-eyed Viserion. Mm-hmm. You know, and. But... We have the and like all of a sudden we have we, they kill a white they kill they kill a white walker and all of a sudden the people around him die so they realize vocally that like okay so maybe it's the people that he's turned that die which mm-hmm. is very handy but really I feel like the biggest one was just the ice because supposedly shit gets colder. When the White Walkers get around, and yet John and company are able, the Snow Patrol is able to get across this ice thing to this tiny island. But when the White Walkers try to go across it, their weight collapses the ice. Mm-hmm. And it's like, guys, come on. Everything's supposed to get fucking cold. Like, you established this what? beforehand, like, three seasons ago. It's just, it's silly shit like that that, that will stop the show from being, I don't know. Now the, you're... 
You're talking mathematics now because it's I'm not in... talking about that. I'm talking about previously yeah, sure. previously established tropes of the show, which means everything gets colder. We, so if we John know it gets... if John goes out into that ice with his tea and the ice cracks, when the zombies go out, when the whites go out, it should get colder, which means it should, like that's very simple. That's not. No, no, no. It, it's all incremental. How much colder does it get versus how many zombies are on the ice at a time? No, stop does it. it. Get... Stop what you're doing it... right now. Stop what I'm you're just, doing. I'm just saying. Stop. You're playing I'm devil's advocate and you know you're wrong. You know they didn't think about this in the writer's room. You know they were just doing this. It wasn't Alex, like I, they were like, I okay, thought... so it's going to be fine if a multitude of them steps out into the ice. We can forget about the coolness. When they just forgot about it to begin with. Like, you cannot give them this much credit. I'm never wrong, Alex. I thought you did this by now. <laughs> All right. So what's your next low, Brian? I didn't do my first low, I don't think. Did we oh, do two already? What's your first low? I, I'm totally out of it. Uh, my first low is Benjen. Oh, uh, uh, Deus Ex Benjen? That was on my list, too. Deus Ex Benjen? Benjen? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Benjen. Benjen Ex Machina. Benjen shows up <laughs> out of nowhere again. Fine. I can buy that. He's patrolling the north. He's probably following this army, keeping tabs. He rides in. He saves his You're nephew. Right. <laughs> who, despite parentage, is still his nephew, despite everything else. Yes. But Ironically. to then just immediately, why can't he pull John on the horse and ride to the wall? Why does he have to sacrifice Dude, himself? Somebody put a titanic, just like, somebody put a titanic, yeah. titanic beam on Twitter. It was like, Benja could have fit on that horse. Yep. Jack could have fit on that <laughs> piano. That's a big door. It's a big door. <laughs> It was a big horse. Uh, I bet, you know, we waited for Benjamin to show up for years and he shows up and he saves Bran. And then, you know, this is what, I mean, he saved John. So that's not nothing. That's important. That's a colossal thing. Well, but did he have to sacrifice himself to do so? Did, this is the man did, with the one pager in Westeros. Well, and also this is the man with like the entire, the entire second season was predicated upon finding him. Jor yep. mm -hmm. J or Mormon leaves Castle Black with a squadron of his best rangers to go and find Ben Stark. And this is the man that got J Bear's dad killed. Basically. And J Bear and Irving got to meet him. Yep. Womp womp. Womp womp. Alright, so Johnny, your be your second best. Second best, um, it, it's a minor, minor moment, but it's the Hound's first rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My new favorite show is watching the Hound throw rocks at zombies. <laughs> well, I love the first half of that show. I don't like the second <laughs> half of that show so much. I, I also like that the Hound can eventually be proven wrong. Like, he's just been like, everyone's a cunt. Height. Like, <laughs> everyone... And then, every, hey, and like, he's usually watch right. Watch the language here, August. Pardon me. Pardon me. I was paraphrasing. But, <laughs> but eventually, like, what I like about the Hound, what I like about the way they write him is that, like, a, like he's usually really right, but every once in a while he's wrong, and it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And he threw a rock, and he was like, dumb cunts. And then he threw, it, <laughs> then he threw another one. He was like, "Oh shit!" And we and everybody was like, "Are you fucking serious? Dude? Seriously?" We were sitting like, on, "You heard the record scratch." We were sitting on our exactly. We were sitting on a rock, and now we're sitting on a rock with zombies attacking. Yeah, they weren't attacking before Some, you threw the fucking somehow rock. the the zombies outsmarted S uh, Sandor Clegane. And this is I gotta okay, this I gotta say when he threw that second rock and then Tormund almost died because of it. When I thought, like for the second, when I thought Tormund was going to die, I was super pissed at the rock. <laughs> not, no, like, by not super not pissed the at the rock, you mean you were super pissed at Dwayne Johnson? Because that fits for me for some reason. I was simultaneously pissed at the rock and the hound equally. If that rock just flew a little bit better. I feel like without the rock, without Dwayne Johnson, none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. I have to say that was a moment definitely where I was like, I wrote down, I was like, I now know, I have now felt exactly 98% of the feeling I will have when Tormund actually does die. Like I will have, yeah. I have now approached, I really thought he was going to eat it. And I was like, cause I don't trust the show anymore. I used to trust I it. I was literally yelling at I don't trust the it anymore. Like I don't very loud. Like my neighbors heard me, me yelling at the TV. Okay, good. We were in the same place. Very same place. I was like, no, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. And then, but I also was like, you know what? I will be very, very, very angry if this happens right now. And I'll be super pissed. And I couldn't tell if that was because I like Tormund so much or if I thought this was because this was before his time and they wanted to kill him for story, kill him for a narrative reason. So that's why I say I'm like, I have 98%. Well, like, he has, he has no plot armor left. I yeah, mean, but he so never had, he made, never had plot armor. He was never, there was, I mean, he's just really entertaining. I wouldn't say that because early on, like without Tormund, John doesn't convince the wildlings and I mean, it, things go a lot smoother with Tormund. Yeah, he makes they, things possible. They, yeah, but they could but, write it without him easily. They, they could, but everything made more sense that Tormund was his advocate. And now that he doesn't need that advocate anymore, it made sense. Like, Tormund's now expendable, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. it, to me, I just assume it made narrative sense to kill him. So, when he was, like, being dragged into the water... Yeah, I but said, you got, y'all are forgetting his, like, epic romance with Brienne. Like... Oh, yeah, that I has, guess I totally that forgot has that. Not, that has not been finished yet. So his his narrative storyline is not done. Uh, actually, they <laughs> implied that it was finished because when he talked to the Hound earlier in the episode and he talked about how he have babies with the big woman, he openly admitted we're not together. And he, you know, I know, there was it was no so more. cute. It was so cute. Right. He was like, no, it was I'm super cute. Die. And it implied he was going to die. They did that on purpose to <laughs> make it okay to kill him. Why he was and then they didn't die kill and they were just like, P.S. I actually think they implied he was going to live. I disagree. Um, well, also, let's talk about how Brienne and the Hound are now headed to King's Landing. Where the mountain is. And mm-hmm. how does everyone at this table feel about Clegane Bowl? Because I feel like they're going to tease We know you love it. We well, know that you can't wait for it. Yeah, we know no, that, that you... But also, like, I feel like <laughs> now he's going to get there and be like, so my brother's basically a stitched together pimple of a person. Yeah. Like, well, the one, the thing is that he knows how the, he knows the two things that work against reanimated dead things, and that's <laughs> obsidian and thrown rocks. Oh my gosh, I would be throwing so, rocks. I would. He be just so... throws a rock and knocks the tr- off the mountain, and that is all of Clegane Bowl. Throwing I would give D and D a hug. <laughs> it would Johnny, be I'm like... going to tell you this right now. If if it if that meetup goes like the hound just <laughs> throwing pebbles at the mountain the i'm just i will immediately mail you a hundred dollars hundred dollars <laughs> cash mail to you immediately and i will be happy to do it because it will be hilarious if he's just throwing <laughs> rocks at the mountain who is too slow and dumb to do anything about it i would be really really happy if the hound just walked up to the mountain and the mountain took off his helmet and the hound was just like um, you, it was really good to see you. I'm going to, I'm glad things are good for you. I'm glad you got a girl. I think we've resolved things. I came here with some stuff and I don't need that stuff anymore. Like I'm free of baggage. You do you be your best self. I I'm think gonna, I'm gonna throwing go. pebbles is more likely than what you just <laughs> laid out. I think throwing rocks is probably more likely or throwing fire, but yeah. No, yeah. Rocks right. and fire are more likely. I'm saying even throwing pebbles <laughs> is more likely than what you just introduced. Oh, as a... so you're being insulting. Got it. Cool. Yes. So what was your... Yes. What was one of your tops? Uh, The ice dragon? Is that... <laughs> am I jumping it? Was that everybody else's number one? That's a top Wait, for I you? I missed the last five minutes. That's a top for you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? When Viserion, that dragon... But okay. a child, a child, a child becoming a zombie. He was a deadly child, all right? <laughs> when they're pulling him out of the ice at the end with the chains, and immediately you just see him pulling the chains, you immediately know what's happening. And you know what's going to happen, but when he actually opens his eye and it's blue, I mean, that's one of the biggest moments of the whole series. The whole series, through seven years. Like, is whether you like it or not, that is epic storytelling because now what they established early on, Danny shows up to save the Magnificent Seven and she's just blowing through the army of the dead, lighting them all up. One of those dragons has to go down and the Night's King has to get one of those dragons to narratively create right. a competent Thanks. adversary for John and Danny. Because no. when John and Danny are together, they seem unbeatable. 
So Cersei's yeah, not do. even really even do. with this Super with the score unbeatable. Super unbeatable. Cersei's, so hot. That's right. Unbeatable. <laughs> so Cersei is not a real threat. So now when you take away a third of your weapon of mass destruction you hand it to the enemy now all of a sudden it creates much more tension and drama if, if it simply came in though i will admit for a second when those dragons cleared everything out there was like a lane where i thought john was going to just charge right at the i Knights thought he was going to get on Rhaegal or that yeah yeah oh I thought, that's like, Rhaegal would that come back and like john was going to be get on him or, or he was going to charge I, the knight's king but he didn't he didn't do the hero thing like danny doesn't like because he's well and for a, for a set when he climbed out of the water before Benjen showed up, I was like, holy shit, is Viserion going to get out of the water, still alive but injured, and Jon's going to ride him back? Like, that's oh, what I thought. Oh, that would have been happen. so much better. Like, he arrives <laughs> at East so on a dragon, better. and Danny just melts right in front of him. Like, okay, it's done. We're, we're united now. But that's why I think that led to my disappointment in Benjen. As much as I love Benjen, the fact that, you know, but it, it's narratively, like from a story standpoint, it's it's much better writing for the dragon to now be in the possession of the Night's King. So oh, first, yeah, it doesn't make me warm and fuzzy inside, but it it's going to lead to better story. So it gets thumbs up. So you're a cruel, cruel person. Got it. I'm not rooting for it, but it's already happened. You can accept it, or you can, you know, or you could not, and it's uh. It's going to make for better story down the road, so I'm for it. Johnny, was that one of your best? Um, the what? Um, it wasn't one of my best. No, my third. Did we cover your second best? Um, let's see. My second best. Um, boat sex, Walking Dead <laughs> stuff. Um, my second best actually, like I really, really did like the polar bear zombies. <laughs> I thought that was totally fucking un- unnecessary, and I was like, "We're getting a fifteen extra minutes this episode, so we can so get, we can see a polar bear, so we can see a like several zombie polar bears that are independent of the pack of zombie humans that are clearly controlled by the White Walker. Like they go through all this fucking shit to make us believe that zombies are controlled by the White Walkers that created them, and yet." Those White Walkers clearly are not aware of John and his Magnificent Seven or the Snow Patrol before they get there. Or else they would have attacked. Like, I mean, or they would have attacked Eastwatch. Like, there's just so fine. They can't do that. And yet there are independent zombie polar bears that are out stalking, which at the end of the day, I'm not mad at because, frankly, that was really fucking good. And it was kind of cool to see... I don't know. Actually, no, it wasn't. Like, I was... Sorry, I'm still processing everything. To see Thoros get bitten and then not die, and then he dies later of hypothermia, it was like... Okay, really? And then the Hound completely frees in front of fire. It's like, I don't need to be reminded that the Hound is afraid of fire. Now is the time for the Hound to, like, get the fuck over that, because he's literally in a land of ice, and you could put out the fire easily. That felt a lot like Theon. The hound freezing yeah. felt a lot like the unfreezing. You know what? Yeah, and honestly, yeah. In that, and at that point, it was redu- so now it's redundant for two reasons. He's frozen well, those- in front of fire before. Now is the time to like show me the hound being like, "Fire's not my enemy." Yeah, uh-huh. those are those are moments you see in seven in season seven that you won't see in season eight. These are they're creating more barriers for the characters to get over yeah, before but we've next. had the same barrier the hound has had the same barrier since day i know they're, one. they're stretching like, out well yeah. that's why you're getting season seven it, eight that's short why it's instead of one yeah instead of an extended season seven well, instead yeah, of 13 that's... episodes this year we're splitting it well yeah like that's... sopranos did well that's why yeah well like every fucking big ass cable show has been like yep. let's break it bad break it. Yeah. sex in the city mad men mad men all yeah. of it all of it. Brian and I are like 90 uh, right now. We're like, all these shows, these shows just extending their seasons. And millennials. Millennials. They're the blame for everything, right? Just in general. All right, Johnny, what's your and last low? My last low um, would half of, well, we actually covered half of it. Oh, no, we didn't. Um, my last low has to be Everything Arya Sansa. Okay, right, mine too. 
I, I like. I, I don't have think. I don't have an in depth conversation on it because, with the exception of one of my top moments, which was the archery conversation. Oh, that was brilliant. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that was my number one low was Ari, Ari, the fact that Arya fell for what Littlefinger put down. Well, yeah, and was also a... like they're trying to paint her like a psycho. They're really trying yep. to paint her like I mean, she used language that was reminiscent of Ramsay. Yep, she was very creepy. Mm-hmm. And it was the fact that the show did that, like when she was like, "Do you want to play a game?" The game of faces. If you win, blah blah blah. If you die, if you lose, you... that was exactly what he said to. That's exactly what Ramsay said to Rick, and it's exactly what Ramsay said to Theon. Not exactly, but it's it seemed, just... It was the the same tack. It was the, yeah. It was the same. I'm gonna play with my food before I eat it. Kind of sensibility and. I didn't expect them to demonize Arya this way. And I'm hoping that it will pay off next episode and something unexpected storytelling wise or narratively will happen. But it's strange to me that they've taken this tack with Arya because it's really hard to think of her as anybody else, but somebody who like has a bag of like fucking dead face skins Mm -hmm. near her and hates her sister and is willing to believe the worst about her. Without taking into context the fact that, like, okay, well, Arya has been through a bunch of shit in her life. Maybe she could be empathetic to her sister. I don't know. The whole thing just feels weird and wrong. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of like last season, Arya. Yeah. Well, there is a sense, and this was my number one low point to the Sansa Arya stuff. There is a sense, though. Yes, they've both been through a lot, and both of their experiences put them in opposite directions kind of mm-hmm. and now they're reunited so i can see based on what aria's done um aria never longed for winter failure longed for her family she longed to finish her list well now she's home she diverted from her list and she went home and when she gets back and she, what she perceives as sansa betraying john whether that's true or not that's how she's seeing it um i understand her being very forward and abrasive about it but yeah she's coming off as creepy and she's by far my favorite character and while i did not like sansa early in the show she's grown on me lately oh i so, felt like aria in that conversation initially she was like you're a fucking asshole i was like wow aria is like all of us to sansa seasons one through three all right so hey folks we're back we had a small recording hiccup as in the internet at my house ran out and I was the one hosting these Skype calls. So we're back to talk about how much we really didn't like everything that happened at Winterfell. Yeah. So we didn't really like everything that happened in Winterfell. Mm. It was the worst. It was the worst with the exception, as we mentioned of the archery scene, which was great. Um, I have to say like, I just was on San- like Team Sansa. I don't see how you couldn't be. Yeah. Like, and I also I feel like really they've this had better get wrapped up next episode because honestly I feel like if it doesn't, if Arya remains the same person, it's like they've taken a complete zigzag to her and been like, oh right, no, she actually spent her time at the house black and white, becoming a complete and utter sociopath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't and... drag you can't drag this story into the off season. And simply the fact that, like, um, as much heat as this show has taken over the years for, like, misogynistic stuff, like, here now you're presenting Sansa once again in a situation, an isolated situation where she is forced to feel threatened, um, which, uh, you know, it... For something she can control. Mm-hmm. And something she shouldn't... Now she's finally home, she's in charge... And now her little sister is the one that's threatening her. And Arya remains my favorite character, which is why I believe that this will resolve itself next week. Um, Littlefinger can't continue to manipulate the entire situation for this long. But I just hope it's more sophisticated than that. It's like, yeah, like I, I agree with you. And I agree that I, I'm not worried about Arya becoming a crazy villain. No, I'm not worried about would... Sansa. Like, no, and I'm and I'm not worried about Sansa. Not really. Like I'm not worried about the Stark family. Not like falling apart because of something like this. At this point, what I'm annoyed with is the fact that like this is the main conflict. Like this yeah. is the conflict between yeah. the Stark sisters. Is that there's a conflict. Period. And it just seems trite. It seems like the easy 
it seems like shooting fish in a barrel to have these women come home. And like, I understand why there would be conflict, but this is, this to me is just, it's based on nothing. Arya's attitude towards Sansa is based on nothing. And only, and only because we haven't seen her be this cold hearted. We saw her last season, like kind of overcoming the idea of being a soulless, faceless murderer and saying like, no, I'm not going to be that. I'm going to go home to Winterfell and fight for my family. Then getting here and like levying those same skills that she learned at the House of Black and White at her sister. It doesn't really make sense. Right. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really track. And it, it feels like they're capitalizing on a rivalry that ended for the audience mid season two. Yep. I stopped caring about Sansa and Arya when both when of them stop. were in mortal. Yeah. When they stopped being children. Yep. Like, this is dumb. And from to an extent, I understand Arya in simply that. Right. It, in her mind, there is there is nothing she wouldn't do to protect the Stark house. And if she truly sees Sansa as backstabbing John, then I can understand her being upset. But never to the point. That's why I mean, I wasn't surprised when she flipped the knife around and handed the dagger to, to Sansa simply because I, I, there was never a point where I thought Sansa was actually in any danger. Yeah. It's just, it's an intimidation game. And it's just the fact that she's doing it anyway. That is really kind yeah. of the fact that it's gotten this far is just like it's unnecessary. Oh, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just don't buy it. That's the thing. It's like, I definitely buy that there would be strife. We said this last episode, like I completely buy the fact that these people don't know each other. They don't know each other. They don't get each other. They were different to begin with. It's just garbage. Because... I'm total sorry. Gar- it's total garbage day. If you guys yeah. have ever seen the, the classic, the classic 80s horror movie, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. I think you're using classic pretty liberally. Correctly? I think I am using it correctly. Thank you. But, but okay. yes, there's a classic scene in there, the garbage day scene. Most The internets will know what I'm talking about. But the uh, it's just a it's just a shit show. It's just totally um, unnecessary, and it seems like filler considering everything else that's going on. But it's the only political warfare that's going on with everything else we're dealing with. You know, everybody there else is be- actual moral uh, mortal danger, and they're they're forcing to make Littlefinger still relevant because he's not a physical danger threat. He's a political capital threat. Um, he was really good this episode, though. I will mm-hmm. say this. He was very more interesting than he's been the last couple of episodes. Right. And so they have to force his storyline back into being relevant. Because a few seasons ago, Littlefinger was the, you know, like, um, undisputed, you know, political Except intelligent for... threat. His His game could have been broken with one simple question, which is, hey, where'd you get that letter? Yep. No shit. And whose bed did you find it under? Yeah. Oh, I I was following Littlefinger around because he's a creeper, and I found it in his bed. And bam, game is broken because Sansa doesn't know where he got it. Well, yeah, and that's that's kind of where, like, like why that's why my like top low was just logic in general. Yeah. Yeah. But Littlefinger logic in general. Littlefinger can play that off to Sansa the same play way he played it off to the new Maester, whose name I can't remember. Wilkin. Walken. Walken. Simply that, like, oh, hey, Sansa doesn't want anybody seeing this. We just want to get rid of it. You know, I want it out of the record. So he, you know, he can play it off like everything else he plays off. Is simply like, oh, Sansa, I was I was protecting you. I was looking out for your interest. And whether she believes him or not, when he says it enough times and it proves true enough times, then she's going to start to buy into it. Well, and so here's here's another problem with the episode. The fact that Bran has not downloaded all of this information, all the relevant information to Sansa and Arya about Littlefinger, which she obviously knows, is a problem. The fact that Daenerys did not kill the Night King when she had a chance is a problem. The fact that she didn't stay there and just kill every single White Walker she could find or every White Week she could find. Because it wasn't like, they didn't convince me that her coming to that conflict was so emergent that she would forget the fact like, Hey, I could just mow down every enemy in my path. Cause now I have three dragons instead of just one. Right. And, and if they simply and take like, out all the white walkers were in one spot, there was like six of them there. If you just fry all of them at once, the rest of the army falls. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and even if they didn't know that, it was like, well, obviously you would kill every single one of them you could. Right, yeah. but at the obviously same time, you would mow them down, and so it's like, no, I'm I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying like, they did. Well, she could she couldn't have known to kill the big the big five or whatever. Right, but, but she couldn't. She did have the power with three dragons to fucking carpet bomb that shit with dragon fire. And why didn't they kill it? That's again, it was just like, okay, guys, really, like now it's like I'm liking the fact that we're we're we're, we're reversing mythology gender roles and having Daenerys come pick up John. And, but, and that. That's all accurate to an extent, but at the same time, in the heat of the moment, when you're watching it and when you see Viserion go down, there is an actual threat, and he's loading up that second spear. Yeah, but he didn't didn't go down until way too late. Like, she could have carpeted. There weren't that many of them. Right, but her goal was to pick up that the Magnificent Seven, and when she gets six of them on, and then John says, "You got to leave," and the Night's King is picking up another spear. At that point, then it's like, oh, "Okay, man, it was so hot. That was so Pretty, hot." Oh yeah, <laughs> super John and Danny Shipper right now. Um, well, that's actually right. we didn't. That was my last uh, high moment. Was uh, just Not John really. and Danny. They're 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 back and forth through the whole episode. It is a uh, and I'm not typically, like I said, I don't typically care about the relationship stuff, but this is, uh, it's like impossible. Not Pretty to- dope. That's the happy ending. That's what we've suffered through the Red Wedding and all this other stuff for. And uh, is to eventually who's going to end up together and you have to hope it's them. Mm-hmm. I am like, it's good, y'all. It's like, it's way too good. Like the and the actors, it's Kit Harrington and Amelia Clark, one hundred percent. Also, that said, like the dialogue that was in that fucking boat cabin today, is yeah. the best romantic dialogue that's been on Game of Thrones, bar fucking none, bar none. Besides that dialogue, the Kit Harrington is short joke was another high point of mine. Oh, without a doubt, the whole scene between Danny and Tyrion was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I love that he was also like, just like, I'm, I don't even, I have nothing left right now. Nothing left. If you don't work, nothing works. <laughs> Do you get it? Like, nothing works. Can you just try? Please. And she's talking about heroes. And when, when Tyrion's like, I've had heroic moments. I was like, yeah, tell her about the Blackwater. You yeah. Know, I, was, I, was I rushed the TV. Blackwater Bay. It was really oh. cute. But you gotta call it the Blackwater Bay. Saying I ran out the mud door sounds a little uh, off. <laughs> Love the show. The show cared enough at some point for Danny to say at the end of the conversation, "Just like I know you're brave." Like I get it. Like the show cares about Tyrion enough to be like, yeah. Danny needs to acknowledge that he is brave. We need this to be like Danny needs to pat Tyrion on the head. Yeah. Oh, that was so great. Yeah, that was I mean, I know a couple of weeks ago with the what they call it, the loot train, mm-hmm. people are arguing that that was like one of the best episodes ever. This one, it's not even a contest. This one so. pulls like that this episode one. out of the way. This one. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this episode was so good on so many levels and the levels on which it was bad were many. Yeah. Many, but it doesn't but, it doesn't even matter at this point. It doesn't. John, it doesn't. John and Danny Actually, elevate the story so, so far ahead of everything else that it does. the the um the miscues are just they don't even mean anything. <laughs> like the there's like the they highs have, in this episode. Oh my god, totally. Brian, you're a John and Danny shipper. You are a total shipper right now. You are don't shipping you dare. it shipping it. I'm not shipping nothing. That's <laughs> Brian a, Connor hashtag <laughs> shipping it. Shipping that's, it. That's Tumblr it's a, speak. It's, it's a beautiful I'm too thing. old for that stuff. <laughs> you love them. You want to marry them. You have like 10,000 of their babies. Oh, sick American <laughs> Beauty reference. Look at that. Going back like 20 years almost. That's good. I get there for that. You're welcome. All right. Um, All right. With that, anything else we need to cover? I think we hit our highs, our lows, our creamy middles. It's a Simpsons Ew. joke. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm happy. Next, uh, it looks like we're in for some more super fast travel based on the promo for next week. Yes, we are. Uh, haven't caught that yet. So the uh, well, oh, it's um, straight to King's seven, Landing. Seven days is too long to wait. I want it now. 
Well, good news if HBO keeps doing what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I resisted. I did that, too. We all did. That, that episode leaked on like Hi. Wednesday, and I wanted to watch it so bad. And I said, "No, no, no. We gotta wait. We gotta wait." Okay, listen, ladies. You need to start watching for spoilers in like January. Okay, I don't want to hear about you like getting all your panties in a twist about fucking. We had this conversation a long time ago. I don't want it. Early. I want to wait until Sunday night, and then I want it all at once. No, you wait till Wednesday spoilers. night. Wednesday night is what you want to wait to. No, because then I just have to avoid as much as is possible, given our profession, avoid the internet for four or five days. It, oh, not that hard. Yeah, actually, like it's hard. It's not hard, guys. All right. Well, we'll see if we can make it all the way to Sunday for next week. We'll have another episode where we talk a little bit more in depth on uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Uh, anything else we want to add before we pop out? Uh. I wanted to thank you guys for having me on. It's always a blast. Thank you for coming thank you. back. No Guesting problem. Guesting last night. We appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next week. We'll see you guys later this week. Or later this week. All right. Bye, folks. Bye.